Good afternoon on this Tuesday, the 13th of March. This is an update on newly classified Cyclone Lua located north of Karatha. As you can see, the Bureau of Meteorology has just recently put out their first forecast track. And as we work our way into the day on Thursday, they are forecasting this storm to begin making more of a turn toward the east after having become a Category 2 cyclone. The number of surface observations across the Southeast Indian Ocean are somewhat limited, so we are stuck with no more than some satellite interpretation and the latest satellite estimates of this developing cyclone from NOAA is a 2.5 which is certainly indicative of at least a 35 knot minimal tropical cyclone and the latest estimated winds from the ASCAT satellite imagery would reveal that we do have a closed surface circulation which is one of the requirements for a cyclone upgrade and we can easily see that there are 30 to 35 knot winds surrounding the circulation center so these are the reasons why the Bureau has decided to make this cyclone Lua. The latest enhanced infrared satellite animation shows that we had a rather significant burst of thunderstorm activity earlier today and this convection has begun to decrease somewhat however if we look really closely it still is persisting rather nicely here just to the west which is where our surface circulation is located we can see the overall rotation fairly well on the latest visible satellite animation and we can really begin to see those signs of the cyclonic motion really beginning to increase within the cloud elements so the storm is definitely on its way to becoming a more robust cyclone over the next couple of days and as we switch over to the water vapor animation this shows us what the conditions are like in the mid to upper levels of the atmosphere and some of these darker areas are where there's quite a lot of dry air but as we can see that dry air is remaining well off toward the southwest and it looks like the clouds are fanning out here which is a good indication that the upper level winds and vertical wind shear are relatively light and all of these are good indications that we will be seeing more strengthening over the coming days. As we take a more regional view of the water vapor satellite first off this is the Pilbara coast this is the overall location of Cyclone Lua and of course we also have our second tropical low over the Timor Sea. It should also be pointed out that we have a trough approaching from the southwest it just went over Perth and is continuing to move toward the northeast out ahead of that we have plenty of vertical wind shear down toward the south however this shear axis is going to bypass our cyclone and we can also see all of this on the latest wind shear graphic again down toward the south that is where we are seeing in upwards of 50 knots of vertical wind shear but right along the coast and right along the monsoon the vertical wind shear values drop below 10 knots so this is certainly a favorable area and we can see this a little bit better on the streamline analysis we see two main areas of upper level anticyclonic motion and that is going to be where your upper level winds are most favorable so what about steering well as we take a current look at things this is the first trough approaching south australia and the circulation that you see over the southeast indian ocean is the cyclone itself so you really don't want to look so much at that you want to look more so at the surrounding features and over here this is an area of higher heights and that is going to push our cyclone a little bit more toward the north over the next 48 hours and we also saw that in the official bureau forecast track but this ridge is going to quickly weaken because as you will see there's another trough approaching from the southern Indian Ocean this trough is going to continue moving more toward the northeast and this ridge is going to weaken rather significantly and by the time this trough makes it into western Australia that will be the main kicker that will allow the cyclone to take a turn more toward the southeast in the general direction of the Pilbara. Switching over now to the latest dynamical model forecast beginning with the latest ECMWF model run this is a current look at the 500 hectopascal analysis which is basically just a very unique and fancy way of saying that this is the mid-level analysis of the atmosphere and once again just like we saw with the steering chart that we looked at just a moment ago here is the main presence of the ridging and that is going to push our developing cyclone a little bit more toward the north once again over the next 48 hours so as we go into day one again the ridge is still there the first trough is bypassing the cyclone and it's continuing northeastward as we go into day two and day three this troughing or the initial round of troughing is continuing east but then here comes the breakdown of the ridge over much of western Australia and this is the point in which we expect our cyclone to become captured by the second trough finally as we go into 96 hours so now this is looking at around Saturday morning the storm is beginning to make landfall here 
between South Headland and Broome. So all interests, especially between those two cities, are expected to have at least some type of cyclone impact. Of course, it is somewhat too early to determine exactly where the center is going to cross the coast, but it is fairly likely at this point that you will at least have some rather significant weather here within the next three to four days, and it's really going to go downhill as we get into the early morning hours of Saturday with a potential landfall just prior to noon. But again, don't run away or don't get too carried away with specifics at this time. Of course, we all know that cyclones are rather difficult to predict, not to mention forecasting the exact timing of a landfall several days in advance. All that being said, however, the fact that the European model and the American GFS model are in such agreement gives us a little bit added confidence compared to what we would normally be at four days into the future. So as we take another look at the GFS, again, this is now the latest run of this particular model. We see our initial area of low pressure near Darwin beginning to push inland here within the next 30 to 36 hours. And then as we go deeper into the forecast period, Cyclone Lua is expected to become the main weather news story as we get deeper into the week and as the storm continues to intensify as we work our way into day three. Obviously this storm should become much more significant than the one that is currently located in the Timor Sea and once again as we look into day four much like the ECMWF model we are looking at a potential landfall here somewhere in the general direction of South Headland and Broome and all interests anywhere near these aforementioned regions should be preparing for at least category two conditions and I would not at all be surprised to see the Bureau eventually bump the forecast intensity up to around category three near the time of landfall. One additional point I would also like to make with regard to the GFS forecast here's a look at the upper level parameters here for Friday night and into Saturday morning as we discussed in yesterday's video some of the darker green colors on this map would portray areas where the vertical wind shear values are relatively light and if we look at the upper level vectors this is the position of the upper level ridge so that favorable upper level ridge is still forecast to be directly above the cyclone as the storm is beginning to move on shore so this system should continue to strengthen all the way up until the time the center begins to cross the coast and also we have some rather strong mid-level and upper level winds located over the southern end of the country so we will more than likely see a very favorable poleward outflow jet along the southern semicircle of the cyclone which is just another indicator that this storm should continue to strengthen. So with all of this talk about conditions being so favorable for continued intensification one may wonder why I think that this system will remain below category 4 or category 5 intensity. Well first off as mentioned by the Bureau the rather slow motion of the storm over the next 48 to 72 hours could allow for some upwelling which is basically going to allow some of the cooler waters below the ocean surface to get funneled upward and of course those hurricanes and developing tropical cyclones would much rather prefer to be sitting over warm water temperatures so if the storm lingers too much over the same area then that very well could place a limit on the storm's peak intensity. One other potential inhibiting factor for the maximum winds could be the lack of a robust pressure gradient. As we take another look at some of those day three and day four sea level pressure forecasts, you'll see that some of the models are continuing to show the top end tropical low lingering here across the northern portion of the country. And as long as we still have rather low pressures to the east of developing tropical cyclone Lua, we're not going to see that sharp pressure gradient that we could otherwise get with some other tropical cyclones that are located fairly close to areas of high pressure. So this could be a rather large cyclone with a rather wide wind field but that is going to help mitigate some of those stronger winds ever so slightly. But the moral of the story is we are still several days away from a cyclone landfall here across western Australia and there are still many uncertainties and that is to be expected with a multi-day forecast of a tropical cyclone. So all interest here across the Pilbara, extending all the way north into Broome and even points just north of there, should continue to closely monitor the official products from the Bureau of Meteorology. So thank you for viewing all of our content here at 28storms.com slash cyclone. Don't forget to place our website in your bookmarks for a future reference as we plan on continuing to post more video updates of this developing cyclone in the days to come. And you can always follow us on Twitter at 28Cyclones.